Hello and welcome back to the Star Trek Critic. Today's episode is Arena, where the Enterprise crew encounters the Gorn, and a rather stuffy race of beings who simply think they are just better than everyone else. Arena takes place just a little bit after shore leave, so they are pretty well rested right now. This episode starts with Kirk planning on attending a dinner party with Commodore Travers on Cestus 3. And that's where they lose the first point for not scanning the surface. They should have noticed that the outpost had already been destroyed. Spock shows concern over the Commodore asking for security to come down. Well, if he scanned the surface like he's supposed to, which is his job, he would know. And Uhura should have noticed that the speech was recorded. McCoy loses a point for his comment about Spock's ears. It does not stand up to the test of time. I have to take a point here since they are not in the exact positions they started in on the transporter pad. Even then, they could have taken a grid out to the field to have them lined up correctly. Besides, this is a show about the future. Creators of the show should have been able to predict that in the near future, this show would be on a tape format where people would actually look for the errors on their favorite show. And yes, you should have figured that one out before you beam down. That rock formation on top of the screen hides the houses in the distance. In those days, they used painted aluminum foil. Today, it would take a million dollars in computer graphics to hide those houses. Not one of them thinks, oh, we should have scanned the surface like we were supposed to. These crew members actually get named right before they get killed. And I'm not a big fan of the captain's log always re-explaining what just happened. This poor guy's been laying there for three days. He's lucky he's still alive. Spock loses a point for not using the metric system. Oh, Hurley, he is the first to go. It's the curse of the red shirts. In this episode, they call the shield screens. Is this the first time they mention that they can't use the transporter with the shields up? And is this the only episode with real explosions? Of course, the actors did report having hearing damage after these explosions, so that's probably why you don't see them anymore. Spock is convinced the aliens are in the hills in the distance. Spock mentions yards one more time. Can somebody tell me if that's William Shatner or his stunt double? Sulu is unable to fight off the alien ship, so takes the Enterprise to safety. Dr. McCoy's comment is the reason Spock risks going out to help Kirk. And here, the Gorn are able to make Spock's tricorder explode. Lang is gone, and Kelowitz also loses a point for saying yards instead of meters. Star Trek would have been a perfect way to help convert Americans to the metric system, but they didn't do it. They really don't say how much damage the grenades do to the Gorn, but it is enough for the Gorn ship to beam up their crew and fly away. Kirk's explanation of where they are going is pointless, since no matter where they go, it's going to be a largely unexplored section of the galaxy. He means unexplored by Starfleet, of course. But he didn't say that, so minus one point. The officer they saved explains how the attack happened and asks the important question, why did they do it? Spock wants to know that too, and while he's pondering the question, Captain Kirk quotes Admiral Akbar. Kirk is convinced that the attack is a prelude to an invasion, and Spock says to prevent that, they can't let the ship get back home. But it shouldn't the Gorn have already signaled their home by subspace radio? Spock and Kirk should know that, and their action in destroying the Gorn ship would also be an act of war and cause an unnecessary conflict as well. So minus one point for their outdated action. This is all they know about the area they're going into. In this next conversation, Spock is concerned that destroying the ship will cause more harm than good, and that by chasing it away is all that should be done. But Kirk is convinced the Gorn will keep attacking more outposts and keeps asking him to go faster and faster. Spock is the correct one on this. The screenshots of Uhura always turn out great. Lieutenant Uhura discovers they are being scanned by something other than the Gorn. Thank you, Spock. You are so perceptive. This is what happens when you slam on the brakes without your seatbelts on. And here they do a systems report and discover both ships can't move or fire anything, but nothing else of the ship was affected. Spock discovers where the source is, 
The Metrons are a bunch of jerks. They think they are all high and mighty and better than everyone else around them. But when two ships zoom through their territory with the intent to destroy each other, instead of offering a negotiating table, they force the captains into a fight to the death and then plan on destroying the losing team's ship, while all the time watching it on video for their own personal satisfaction. They are just a bunch of pompous asses, similar to Plato's stepchildren or the capital city residents in the Hunger Games. Here is the truth. The psychedelic design of the Metrons is a subtle political statement from the 60s. The Metrons are just a bunch of two-faced liberal hippies. They're like, hey dude, let's protest war by making them fight to the death. Yeah, man. The Gorn. The Human. The Face-Off. He must not be in too much danger, since he can still take the time to talk into the communicator and re-explain what is going on. I will have to take a point here for that. These old Star Trek episodes are constantly narrated like all the viewers forgot what happened right before the commercial break. It's talking down to the audience. He calls this an asteroid, although it is most likely a planet. And we learn Kirk finds reptiles repulsive and thinks all humans have that feeling. The Gorn grabs a big branch, while Kirk climbs a tree and grabs a small branch. If you watch the film, you will see a bird fly across in the distance. This fight scene is in here simply because the networks required it for the ratings, and somewhere the Metrons are currently placing their bets. This kick was a bad idea for Kirk, but it looks good on film. The fight continues for a while, but they have to go back to the corner so the Gorn can readjust his head. All Kirk had to do is box his ears, but it hurt the Gorn pretty good. Now comes the battle of who can throw the biggest rock. Kirk loses this one clearly because the Gorn is so much stronger. Back on the Enterprise, they learn they are helpless. Uhura's screenshots always look spectacular. Spock's screenshots always have his eyes closed. Kirk checks his cell phone for messages. Sorry, Captain Kirk, nobody's ever going to find it and turn it into Starfleet Command. This is the scene where McCoy badgers Spock about logic. But Spock is right this time. Their hands are tied. They really can't do anything to save Kirk. This is foreshadowing. But that rock behind him tied at the top of the hill gets his attention more. The Gorn is creating a type of old-fashioned animal trap. And strangely, it works to catch a human. The show would only be about half as long, but Kirk has to stop and comment on everything he sees. And he's got a long way to go to get to the top. If you look closely, there is a rope tied around the rock at the top. Did the Metrons do that? Or do I have to take a point away for it being visible? Since Kirk didn't take the rope, it didn't really exist on that planet, so I will take a point. Remember this here. Kirk is watching the Gorn set up the trap, so he probably shouldn't fall into it later. Kirk is correct about the Gorn not being very agile. He should have been able to run away from that rock considering how far away it was at first. But he couldn't get away, and now it looks like he's in the final scene from Bambi meets Godzilla. It looks like Kirk waited too long to see if the Gorn was dead. He could have stabbed him with a knife right there and the battle would have been over. But he didn't want to fight to the death to begin with, so I can't take a point for that. But I will take a point for him running straight into the animal trap, since he was just on top of the rocks watching the Gorn make it. He should have known to run the other way. Luckily, the Gorn moves very slow, or Kirk would be dead right now. Spock and the bridge crew try to contact the Metrods for a peaceful solution, but the stuffy Metrons don't give a shit. They are watching Kirk and the Gorn duke it out on pay TV. Kirk is exhausted, but he still has some breath to make a possible final entry. By the way he is talking, he thinks the Metrons left the weapon, not the products to create one. Kirk casts two shadows here because of the lighting. Of course, this place is manufactured by the Metrons, so I can't take a point. But I can take a point here because there are cars in the distance. Either Spock is thinking, or he just ate his favorite candy. So now the Metrons have placed all their bets, and their odds are in favor of the Gorn. So they decided to let the Enterprise crew watch and prepare for their impending doom. Of course, they probably contacted the Gordon ship and said the same thing to them, too. The Metrons make this comment, and the bridge crew are like, Who do they think they're kidding? This is what the bridge crew would look like if Captain Pike was still in charge. 
Spock is a little too quick to recognize that substance. And McCoy is a doctor. He is a little too slow to realize what that chemical compound can do. Their reactions should have been the other way around. And I am going to take a point stating Spock shouldn't have been able to recognize it so quickly. He figured it out. Here the Gorn talks to Kirk and we learn why they attacked Cestus III. They saw it as an invasion in their territory. The Gorn is actually a little more cunning than Kirk here, since he was listening to Kirk's boring commentary mansplaining what he was doing all the time, while the Gorn didn't say anything at all that Kirk could hear. If this was the next generation, Picard would have suggested negotiations, but this is a different time period, and both of them have been convinced by the Metrons their only choice is to fight to the death. Or they could have considered getting the Metrons to help negotiate a peace, but the Metrons are really just a bunch of super intelligent assholes who force primitive races to tear each other up so they can place bets on it and watch it on TV. Here, Spock and McCoy discuss that maybe they were wrong and maybe negotiations should take place between them and the Gorn. How come the super sophisticated Metrons didn't think of that? There should be a disclaimer on this show. Do not try this at home. A Mythbusters episode tried making the canon, and you should check that out. But unless the percentages are just right, it won't work. And if it did work, it would have blown Kirk's arms off, not even hit the Gorn at all. So please, do not try making this at home. Kirk does a good job at limping all the way through the rest of the show after he was injured. The Gorn is slowly approaching, while Kirk takes the time to churn butter. The bridge crew is in as much suspense as the Metrons. That is one thing about the Gorn, they aren't very quick. It's the only thing that gives Kirk the time to make his cannon. Looks like he's just on a stroll to the killing. Here he comes! The bamboo tube is all blown up, and in real life Kirk would have been too, and the Gorn would have eaten him in a ritual victory meal. So I will have to take a point because the cannon wouldn't have worked in a real life situation. This is quite similar to the David and Goliath story, since David's slingshot only knocked down Goliath and then he chopped off his head for all to see. But here Kirk is onto the Metrons and their scheme and has decided to be a little more sophisticated than they are. Kirk calls out the Metrons on just making a reality show. Here is a possible alternate storyline. If you notice, the Gorn disappears and right after the Metron shows up. What if they were the same person all this time and the Metrons destroyed Cestus III pretending to be the Gorn just to lure the Enterprise crew into the little reality show trap? And here we meet the Metron, who may be 1500 years old but still really doesn't know shit about humans. They are more concerned about being stuffy and calling themselves superior to everyone else than actually getting an education on what is really going on in the galaxy around them. Oh, that's right, they're liberals. Kirk smirks, but he's really just being polite. He just wants to get back to the ship. Picard here would have verbally ripped the Metron a new asshole for this little stunt. And why does the Metron want to destroy the Gorn ship? Even Kirk realizes they should talk. The real reason, the Metrons are looking for a legitimate excuse to kill all the Gorn and celebrate with a simmering pot of Gorn stew. That's why he says not to come back for thousands of years, since humans won't get involved in their reality show where they can watch sentient beings fight each other to the death and then they can eat the losers. And he calls us half savage. Kirk magically appears back on the bridge with his uniform all cleaned up. This is a great shot of the first season crew. Sulu points out they were thrown way off course. Spock is curious about the outcome of the planet. Kirk assures Spock humans are a promising species. Of course, Spock has to make a joke Vulcan logic.
And the Gorn was voiced by Ted Cassidy, who played Lurch in The Addams Family and Rock in Star Trek. While Bill Blackburn, Bobby Clark, and Gary Combs put on the skin and chased around Captain Kirk. And the famous Vazquez Rocks was the location of their legendary fight. You will see the rocks again, including in Star Trek Picard. Arena is one of the not-to-be-missed episodes and gets a score of 87%. Now it's time to leave your comments below. Specifically, what did you think of the Metron? Click that like button, the share button, and that subscribe button. Check out my other videos and playlists, and I will see you again soon.